Now we come to the moment that those of you who've been waiting have all been waiting for. It's our special, they think it's all over Grand Prix round from Silverstone. Gary and Rory racing in the Jordan cars will fight it out with Lee and David in the Williams in hot rubber action around the famous twists and turns that make up the Silverstone course. We go over now live to the track where I'm waiting to take us through the preparations for the countdown to the build-up of the big race. A state-of-the-art Formula One racing car. Powered by a state-of-the-art 10-cylinder, 750 horsepower engine, which is capable of speeds of up to 220 miles per hour. The ultimate driving machine. Interesting, but totally irrelevant. Because our competitors are going to be driving one of these. A Formula 27 state-of-the-art dinky car. Powered by engines like this, which will of course be familiar to any of you at home who have a flymo. It may not look big or expensive, but like David Gower's hair, appearances can be deceptive. This little beauty can leave one of Damon Hill's arrows standing on the grid, which is of course what the arrows tend to do. So our competitors are going to be having uh, filmed practice laps in one of these cars and then there's going to be a head-to-head tyre-burning Grand Prix of six laps. So now, let's go over to the entrance gate where our competitors are arriving. <laughs> First to arrive is Gary Lineker, winner of last year's Sporting Challenge, clearly the favourite. He'll be racing in the Jordan number one car this afternoon. And in the opposite team, he'll be racing a number one in the Williams colours this afternoon, is David Gower. Very much the man in form. Here's Lee Hurst, very much the man in form. He'll be the number two Williams in the Gower team today. Every inch the dark horse, except that he's not dark or horse. Here's Rory McGrath. <laughs> the teams don their fireproof suits so vital for survival. These garments represent the cutting edge of space age technology. We got them from Blake 7. The fireproof tote there doing a vital job for everyone's well-being. <laughs> so, David, looking forward to the drive? Very much. I'm just a little bit worried, though. Where's the, where's the chauffeur going to sit? I just feel you're maybe a little overconfident already practising with the champagne. Oh, no. Terraboom every morning at 11, is that's me. Yeah? Well, I suppose you're usually back in the pavilion by 11, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a terrific challenge for you, Rory. Uh, several tight corners. It's going to be nip and tuck. Yeah, but I hope to fit into the car somehow. <laughs> now, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the race commentary, Gary. I mean, uh, racing commentators that haven't got the best of reputations. Murray Walker, for instance, uh, people tend not to think he's that good. In fact, his commentaries, for instance, would you be prepared to say, you know, that, that Walkers are crap, <laughs> Gary? You know, I mean, I mean, as opposed to, say, Derek Pringle, for instance, at the cricket, who's a much better commentator. So, you know, I was just wondering, Gary, if you'd be prepared to say, once and for all, that uh, walkers are crap, but Pringles are fantastic. On the contrary, Nick, I would say that walkers' commentaries are among the crispiest and with the best flavours around. You should try it. You're a very sad man indeed. Here's your helmet, Gary. <laughs> right, I think it's time to go. You've all got your helmets on. Uh, I haven't. Oh, sorry, Lee, I think it was the, uh, the stickers confused me. <laughs> the competitors are in their cars and they're ready for the time lapse. Lee's found a crash helmet. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it on that. So let's go over to the track side and the sound of the inimitable Murray Walker, as imitated by someone much cheaper. Good afternoon, and you join us here at Silverstone for the They Think It's All Over practice session. I should explain that as in Formula One, these practice laps are timed, so the faster you go, the better position you have on the grid. Hurst there in the untaxed Williams had a bit of trouble at the start when he hotwired his car out of habit. And as he drives past those women, Rory McGrath is in pole position, at least part of him is. 
Lineker coming out of a dangerously tight turn. I expect there'll be skid marks there. We'll find out when he takes his suit off later. <laughs> and McGrath finishes his first lap in 1.23.94, which puts him in the lead, which is hardly surprising as he's the first driver to complete a lap. And Lineker's grabbed the lead with 1.19.23. Incredible! And Gower's in trouble, he's stuck behind a caravan. Surely you have to question the decision to hold this race on a bank holiday. And there, I've just seen Hurst finishing his first lap. It looks a pretty fast lap. Yes, he's finished it at 1.17.75 and goes into the lead. McGrath fiddling with his helmet there. He really should stop that and concentrate on driving. Gower, yes, his first lap, believe it or not, is 1.17.94 just behind Hurst. And it's back to Nick in the pits. Now, before the race starts, just a few words about the significance of the flags used to signal to the drivers once the race has begun. First of all, uh, the black flag means that they must stop the race immediately. The chequered flag, of course, means that the race has been won. Uh, the red flag means that this beach is unsafe for bathing. The white flag means that Damon Hill has surrendered. And if you see the red flag with lion rampant suspended from Cornet, it means that David Gower is in residence. <laughs> and now a word about the points. The winner will get ten points, second will get six, third will get four, and fourth will get three. And now it's time for the race. So down to the starting line and the sound of that ever so slightly unfamiliar voice. So the grid order is as follows. Hurst, and in the dirty track it's Gower, then Lineker and McGrath. And just listen to that high pitch wine filling the air. <laughs> as they wait for the lights to go to green. Oh no, no, and this always happens when you're waiting for the lights to go green. <laughs> they're probably signing on as well, and they're almost certainly from Liverpool. <laughs> Now all the driver's eyes will be fixed on those starting lights. There's the red. They're waiting for the green. There's the green. And they're not off. Sensational. They're uh, on. And the official has skidded off the track wearing arrow shoes now. And they've started. And there's Lee Hurst going past the cops as quickly as possible. So no change there. So it's Gower, Hurst, Lineker. McGrath, but not necessarily in that order. For instance, it could be Lineker, McGrath, Gower, Hurst. We just don't know, but one thing is for certain, it'll be one of those four followed by the others. <laughs> and if any of the drivers actually finish the race, they go ahead of Johnny Herbert in the world rankings. So they take the corner, and Hurst, yes, it's Hurst into the pits. I'm not sure what the problem is. Oh, he looks a bit peckish. It looks like, yes, a pup and a sandwich. This last happened to Emerson Fittipaldi at Monaco in 1974 when he could have won the championship if he hadn't stopped for a Fanta. Well, first away in 8.6 seconds. Amazing. And Hurst rejoins the race at the back of the pack. He's got a lot of work to do. His tyres can't be helping him. They're completely bald, although he has tried combing the tread over in a sort of Robert Robinson arrangement. Hurst trying to get past Lineker, but in the lead, there's Gower coming out of Maggots into Brooklands with Luffield to his left, the book depository to his right, and the grassy knoll straight ahead. And Gower is in the pits. He's clearly got a mechanical problem there. We're not sure what it is, but we'll find out in just a minute. And here's the chief mechanic of the Gower team. Oh dear. Nah, mate. It's a drive shaft, isn't it, you know? I mean, that's not a little job. I'll send off for the parts. It's going to be uh, labour. You're going to do a VAT on that. Now, I reckon the best I could do be Wednesday. So, in the meantime, let's rejoin the leaders. And incredibly, Gower rejoins the race in the lead. He was so far ahead going into the pits that he has kept first place. And the gap is increasing between my words, which can be extremely irritating indeed. And here is the unique in-car camera giving us a remarkable view of the high-octane excitement actually inside Lineker's cockpit. 
is nothing like real Formula One, of course. All four cars have been going round for three laps now without a single one of them falling to bits. So, Cowell in front, then Hurst, McGrath, Lineker at the back of the pack. And Lineker! Lineker has come into the pits. He's clearly been signalled by his pit team to come in. The car isn't equipped with a walkie-talkie, but with ears like that, he doesn't need one. like his career in Japan. And there's Lineker at the back, the nation's favourite grey-haired, jaggy-eared ex-footballer trying hard to get back in contention. And look at this! And look at that! And this! Now have a quick gander at this! And look at that! Now back to the race. And McGrath is in the pits, probably for refuelling. Yes, it's for refuelling, and he's in a hurry. No time for a garlic bread. Five, six, seven, eight pieces, an entire quattro the Johnny Pizza in 8.2 seconds. This is a record. So, Gower ahead of Hurst by 1.82 seconds, with the two Jordans trailing way behind. McGrath into the straight. He's got an eight litre capacity, which is almost as much as the car. <laughs> and there is the caravan. They took the run turning on the way to Winchelsea and they've been going round and round for nine hours now. A fantastic row going on in the front seats about Mrs. Henderson's map reading. But the good news is that they've just broken their own lap record. So one, Gower, two, Hurst, three, McGrath and Lineker have disappointing fourth. There's Gower in the lead, but Lineker can console himself with the fact that this is the longest distance ever driven by a professional footballer without being stopped for drink driving. And there's a tremendous tussle for the lead going on between Gower in the blue helmet and Hurst in the pink. It's absolutely neck and neck. And I have to say, I don't know why the Brazilian director is showing us this. In fact, I don't know why we employed a Brazilian director in the first place. And Hurst has snatched the lead. Hurst and Gower jockeying at high speed. It's almost as if their wheels weren't touching the ground. And with the excitement at Fila Pitch, it's time for a commercial break. If you've enjoyed this video, why not try the other video in the They Think It's All Over range? They Think It's All Over No Hold Bard is a festival of good-humoured family fun with the occasional fuck thrown in. <laughs> Available now all quality stockists. And Hurst tries to go through on the outside. He's taken it too wide. He's off. He's in the gravel. Lee Hurst is out of the race. Oh, I hope and pray that the car's all right. Let's just enjoy that humiliating moment for Lee Hurst again from a variety of angles. There he goes, the bald git. McGrath goes into second place and gets a friendly wave of encouragement from his company rival. And Gower is on his own, as he has been for so many of the nights in his life. And Gower takes the checkered flag. He waves to his delighted domestic staff. There they are, who've lost a day's wages to come here today. And McGrath and Lineker choosing this moment to come out in equal second place. It's official. Rory will shag anything. There we are, 41 seconds behind the lead. They tried their best, but unfortunately their best was rubbish. <laughs> There's Lenica. Gower. Well, the winner breaks open the magnum of Tizer. Another shake there. And David Gower quite baffled there by a bottle with a screw top. <laughs> Lee Hurst takes time off downstairs to sign autographs. And there's Rory McGrath jotting down his phone number on a piece of card and, for once, not putting it up in a phone box. 
So that's it from Silverstone. But if you want to see any more motor racing, you can always switch over to ITV, where the coverage will continue for at least another two weeks. And meanwhile, it's back to me in the studio. So David gets 10 points for winning, Gary and Rory get 5 points each for tying in second place and Lee gets bugger all for failing to finish. 10 points each then and a complete waste of a day. <laughs>